Hi everyone and welcome back to the Imachines TV channel. The Zayabori Hydro Power Plant is a major dam project located on the Mekong River in northern Laos. It is one of the largest hydroelectric projects in Southeast Asia and has been the subject of much discussion and controversy. The project aims to harness the power of the Mekong River to generate electricity. It involves the construction of a large concrete dam, which creates a reservoir to store water. This stored water is then released to drive turbines and generate electricity. The Zayabori Hydro Power Plant has a planned capacity of 1,285 megawatts MW, and is expected to produce an average annual output of approximately 7,400 gigawatt hours GWH. This significant amount of electricity will help meet the growing demand for power in Laos and potentially allow for export to neighboring countries. The Zayabori Hydro Power Plant is a significant project that required the design and installation of various hydraulic steel structures. KGAL Consulting Engineers Limited, based in Yorkshire, UK, took on the task of designing these structures, and this film showcases the gate installation process that took place between 2015 and 2016. One of the key components of the project was the construction of two lock chambers, each equipped with three pairs of miter gates. These gates were designed to be up to 30 meters tall, providing access for water vessels to pass through the lock chambers. The installation of these gates was a crucial step in ensuring the functionality of the hydro power plant. In addition to the lock chambers, the Zayabori Hydro Power Plant also required the installation of several other gates. There were seven spillway radial gates, each spanning 19 meters in width and 24.5 meters in height. These gates were designed to regulate the flow of water and prevent flooding. Furthermore, there were four low-level outlet radial gates, measuring 12 meters by 16 meters, which served as additional control mechanisms. During the gate installation process, a stop log assembly method was used for the construction of the radial gates. Stop logs are temporary barriers that are inserted into slots in the gate frames. Each stop log used in this process weighed approximately 59 tons. This technique allowed for the gradual construction and installation of the radial gates, ensuring precision and safety during the construction process. The gate installation process commenced in 2015, with the first outlet gate weighing a staggering 365 tons. By January 2016, the outlet gate was fully operational, contributing to the functionality of the Zayabori Hydro Power Plant. Another important aspect of the project was the navigation channel. To facilitate the navigation of water vessels, floating mooring bollards were installed along the channel. The fabrication of the mooring bollard channel guider began in April 2014, and the guides were ready for installation by July of the same year. These bollards provided a secure and reliable mooring system for boats passing through the hydro power plant. Additionally, three pairs of navigational lock miter gates were installed, with the tallest pair weighing 320 tons and equipped with balancing sluice gates. The initial fabrication of these gates took place at Wesso's on-site factory in 2013. The assembly of the first pair began in August 2014, with the first gate waiting to be installed in July of the same year. Lastly, the project included the installation of seven spillway radial gates. These gates were designed to comply with the latest International Commission on Large Dams, ICOLD, 
Seismic loading recommendations. Measuring 19 meters in width and 24.5 meters in height and weighing almost 500 tons each, these gates were considered to be one of the largest of their kind in the world. The Wesso Ingola Pump Storage Scheme is a hydroelectric power project located in the foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains, on the border between the Free State and KwaZulu, Natal provinces in South Africa. Designed to generate 1,330 megawatts of electricity, this project is aimed at meeting the country's peak electricity demand. The pumped storage scheme consists of two camps, an upper and a lower camp, connected by a series of tunnels over a distance of 9 kilometers. The upper camp houses the Upper Bedford Dam, situated at an elevation of 1,760 meters above sea level, while the lower camp is home to the Lower Bromberg Dam. Together, these dams hold approximately 22 million cubic meters of water. During times of peak electricity consumption, water is released from the Upper Bedford Dam and flows rapidly through pump turbines to generate electricity. The scheme features four reversible pump turbines located in a massive underground turbine hall, with each turbine capable of generating 333 megawatts of electricity. Once the water passes through the underground turbines, it flows through draft tube and tail race tunnels into the lower Bromberg Dam. During periods of low energy demand, such as weekends and nights, the reversible pump turbines are used to pump the water back up into the Upper Bedford Dam, where it can be stored and used for the next peak energy demand. Construction of the Wesso Ingola Pump Storage Scheme began in 2005 with the completion of a 1.2-kilometer exploratory tunnel in June 2007. Priority was given to the construction of roads and infrastructure to accommodate the transportation of heavy loads of materials and equipment to the various sites. Road construction started in January 2007 and was completed in June 2009, including the construction of a pass to the top of the escarpment. Simultaneously, work on the two dams, Bedford and Bromberg, progressed alongside the tunnel and turbine infrastructure. Both dams were completed and commissioned ahead of the tunnel construction. Water collection in the lower Bromberg Dam began in November 2010. The construction of the intake canal and headrace at the upper Bedford Dam was also progressing according to schedule. The main tunneling contract was awarded to the CMI consortium, consisting of South African and Italian companies. The total length of tunneling for the project exceeds 14.5 kilometers, including vertical shafts. Most of the tunnels were constructed using drill and blast methods, while the vertical shafts were raised board. With an elevation difference of 470 meters between the upper and lower dams, the water flows to the turbines through low-pressure headrace tunnels and high-pressure inclined shafts. Each tunnel bifurcates into high-pressure penstocks that lead to the turbines. To withstand the high water pressure, the headrace tunnels and inclined shafts are lined with continuous steel linings designed to withstand internal pressures of up to 72 bars. Gueso SDN BHD, a company based in Malaysia, was subcontracted by CMI to provide the steel tunnel linings. Wesso has extensive experience in hydropower projects and specializes in the design, project management, manufacturing, construction, and commissioning of steel structures. They set up an on-site manufacturing facility, avoiding the transportation of steel liners on national roads. The manufacturing facility covered an area of 5,000 square meters and included overhead cranes. Around 17,000 tons of steel plates were imported from Germany and cut into sections. Oxyacetylene torches were used for cutting, and a steel rolling machine was employed to bend the sections into curved shapes. The sections were then welded together to form the cans, which were checked for strength and integrity before being painted with multiple coats of abrasion-resistant epoxy paint.
The installation of the steel linings involved lowering the cans vertically down the surge shafts on top of the mountain using an overhead gantry crane. The cans were then moved on bogies along the incline shafts using wire ropes and hydraulic trailers. Alternatively, some sections were transported via the main access tunnel near the lower Bromberg Dam. The project placed great emphasis on safety, and WISO adhered to all safety standards and policies. No fatal accidents or serious injuries occurred during the construction process. Additionally, as part of their commitment to leaving a legacy of trained personnel, WISO trained and employed 53 local individuals in various roles, including machine welders, blaster painters, riggers, scaffolders, fabricators, and heavy-duty drivers. The Wesso Ingola Pump Storage Scheme is expected to be completed in 2014, providing South Africa with much-needed electricity generation capacity to meet peak demand. In 2017, the construction progress in Silveretta for the Obervermont Work 2 project showcased significant advancements in various sections of the project. One of the notable achievements was the substantial completion of the machine cavern, which was situated an impressive 800 meters deep within the mountain. The construction of the machine cavern involved intricate and meticulous work. The installation of turbines and pump spirals was successfully carried out, marking a significant milestone in the project. These components are crucial for the efficient harnessing of hydropower. Skilled workers and engineers worked diligently to ensure the precise positioning and alignment of the turbines and pump spirals, enabling them to function optimally. Another key aspect of the construction progress in Silveretta was the concrete lining work in the 2.8-kilometer-long Silveretta Tunnel. This tunnel is a vital infrastructure component of the project, facilitating the smooth transportation of water to the powerhouse. The concrete lining not only strengthens the tunnel structure, but also provides a smooth interior surface, ensuring the efficient flow of water. Within the Silveretta Tunnel, a particularly challenging area to complete was the complex zone where the connection tunnel branches off. This zone required careful planning and execution to ensure the seamless integration of the tunnels. The intricate nature of the branching area necessitated precise engineering and construction techniques to guarantee the structural integrity and functionality of the tunnels. Throughout the construction process in Silveretta, strict adherence to safety protocols and quality control measures were paramount. The turbine blades and pump impeller for the Obervermont Work 2 project undergo a meticulous manufacturing process. The turbine blades are produced in Ravensburg near Lake Constance, and the pump impeller is manufactured by Voith in Sankt Pölten. The turbine blades are crafted with precision, ensuring an exact fit for optimal performance. They are manufactured using a combination of large-scale machinery and fine handwork. The process involves casting the blades from a single piece, followed by several machining steps to achieve the desired shape and dimensions. The blades are then inspected for dimensional accuracy and material quality. Similarly, the pump impeller is created with great attention to detail.
it is cast in a single piece and subsequently machined to its final form. The impeller undergoes multiple machining steps, including the milling of grooves to accommodate the magnetic poles. The manufacturing process requires strict adherence to tight tolerances, as the components must withstand significant forces during operation. The manufacturing process of generators and transformers for the Obervermont Work 2 project involves several intricate steps, combining advanced technology and skilled craftsmanship to create reliable and efficient electrical components. Generator manufacturing process, core assembly. The generator core is built by stacking high-grade electrical steel laminations, carefully insulated from each other to minimize energy losses. The laminations are precision, cut to specific dimensions, and assembled into a sturdy core structure. Coil winding. Copper or aluminum conductors are wound into coils and insulated to withstand high voltages. The coils are carefully positioned and secured within the core, forming the stator and rotor windings. Impregnation. The stator and rotor windings undergo a process called impregnation, where they are vacuum treated with an epoxy resin. This ensures electrical insulation, protection against moisture, and increased mechanical strength. Shaft and rotor assembly. The rotor, consisting of a shaft and an electromagnet, is carefully balanced and assembled onto the generator's main shaft. Precise alignment is critical to maintain optimal performance. Stator assembly. The stator, comprising the core and windings, is mounted securely within the generator housing. Alignment and tight clearances are crucial to ensure smooth operation and minimal losses. Excitation system. The excitation system, responsible for creating the magnetic field within the generator, is installed and connected to the rotor windings. This system plays a vital role in regulating voltage and power output. Testing and quality control. Comprehensive testing is conducted to validate the generator's electrical performance, efficiency, and mechanical integrity. Various tests, such as insulation resistance, voltage regulation, and load capacity, are carried out to ensure compliance with specifications. Transformer manufacturing process. Core manufacturing. The transformer core is constructed using thin electrical steel laminations stacked together and tightly clamped. The laminations minimize energy losses through eddy currents and ensure efficient power transfer. Coil winding. Copper or aluminum conductors are wound onto high quality insulating materials, forming primary and secondary windings. The windings are carefully positioned and secured around the core limbs to achieve proper electrical connections. Insulation and layering. Insulating materials such as paper, mylar, or Nomex are inserted between the windings to provide electrical insulation and mechanical support. Multiple layers of windings are created, and each layer is insulated to prevent short circuits. Tank and cooling system. The transformer assembly is placed within a tank filled with a dielectric fluid, such as mineral oil. The tank provides mechanical protection and helps dissipate heat generated during operation. Additional cooling systems, like radiators or fans, may be incorporated for enhanced heat dissipation.
The installation process of components in the Obervermint Work 2 project involves several stages and requires careful planning, coordination, and expertise. The project focuses on the installation of generators and transformers, and the process can be summarized into the following key sections, foundation and structural setup. The first step is to prepare the foundation for the installation of the generators and transformers. This involves excavation work to create a stable base. Once the excavation is complete, concrete is poured to form the foundation structures. Base plates, anchor bolts, and support frames are installed to securely hold the equipment in place. Precise measurements and alignment are crucial at this stage to ensure the proper positioning of the components. Generator installation. The generator installation process begins with the positioning and alignment of the unit within the designated area. Cranes and lifting equipment are used to carefully move and place the generator. The generator is then connected to the turbine, which may involve the installation of coupling systems to transmit power. The electrical components of the generator, including stator windings, rotor assembly, and excitation system, are integrated following manufacturer guidelines. These components are carefully inspected, and their alignment is verified to ensure optimal performance. Additionally, cooling systems, such as hydrogen or air coolers, may be installed to regulate the generator's temperature. Once the installation is complete, the generator undergoes thorough testing and commissioning to ensure its proper functioning and adherence to safety standards. Transformer installation. Similar to the generator, the transformer installation process begins with careful positioning and alignment on the foundation. Transformers are typically large and heavy, requiring specialized equipment for handling. Once in place, high voltage and low voltage power cables are connected to the transformer. The core, windings, and insulation systems of the transformer are installed according to manufacturer specifications. Cooling systems, such as radiators or fans, are also integrated to dissipate heat generated during operation. Extensive testing and commissioning are conducted to ensure the transformer's electrical performance, insulation properties, and compliance with safety regulations. Auxiliary Systems Integration Alongside the installation of generators and transformers, various auxiliary systems are integrated to support their operation. Control panels, switchgear, and protection systems are installed to monitor and control the equipment. These systems enable operators to manage power distribution, perform diagnostics, and ensure safe operation. Additionally, auxiliary equipment such as pumps, cooling systems, and ventilation systems are connected to provide essential support functions. Communication systems are also integrated to facilitate data transmission and monitoring of the installed components.
Electrical and Mechanical Connections The installation process involves extensive electrical and mechanical connections to establish the necessary infrastructure for power transmission and control. Electrical cables are routed and connected between the generators, transformers, switchgear, and other components. Bus bars, circuit breakers, and protective devices are installed to regulate and safeguard the electrical systems. Mechanical connections, including shafts, couplings, and bearings, are established to ensure the proper transmission of mechanical power. Thorough testing and inspection are conducted to verify the integrity and functionality of these connections. Testing and commissioning. The final stage of the installation process is testing and commissioning. Comprehensive tests are performed on the installed components to assess their performance, functionality, and safety. This includes electrical tests to verify voltage levels, insulation resistance, and protective system operation. Performance tests are conducted to evaluate the generator's power output, efficiency, and stability, as well as the transformer's voltage regulation and overall performance. Fine, tuning and adjustments are made to optimize the operation and performance of the installed components. Once all tests are successfully completed and the components meet the required standards, the installation process is considered complete. The installed components are then handed over for operational use. GE Energy recently completed the installation of 66 Haleati 150-6 MW offshore wind turbines at the Merker Offshore Wind Farm located in the North Sea. With a total capacity of 396 MW, the Merker Wind Farm is one of the largest offshore wind farms in Germany. The project is expected to generate approximately 1,750 gigawatt hours of clean energy annually, which is enough to power around 500,000 households in the region. The installation process involved several steps. GE Renewable Energy was responsible for delivering the turbine components and transporting them to the project site. Some of the components were received at a quayside and loaded onto a jack-up vessel, which was used to install the turbines offshore. The entire process, from manufacturing the components to commissioning and delivering them to the customer, took approximately The manufacturing of the main components, such as the nacelle and E stack, the structure housing the electrical components, was carried out in France. The blades were manufactured in Spain, while the towers were produced in Germany and China. The Netherlands served as the logistic hub for the project, where the towers were assembled, loaded onto the installation vessel, and prepared for offshore operations. The offshore installation phase involved a dedicated team of 10 people working in continuous shifts around the clock. The team consisted of electricians from GE Renewable Energy and experienced contractors responsible for rigging. With over 12 nationalities represented in the project execution team, the Merker Wind Farm became a multicultural and multinational endeavor. Efficiency and continuous improvement were key focuses during the installation process. The time required for loading a full set of components onto the installation vessel was significantly reduced, resulting in substantial time savings. The installation time for each turbine was also minimized, with the current installation time standing at less than 15 hours. These improvements showcased the commitment to achieving the best targets in terms of project execution.
After the installation, the turbines underwent mechanical and electrical completion, including cable corrections and safety checks. This was followed by the commissioning phase, where the turbines were prepared to start generating power. The successful execution of the project ensured that the turbines would contribute to renewable energy generation and help Germany achieve its goal of having 80% of national energy consumption from renewables by 2050. The Merker offshore wind farm will have a significant impact on the local community. With approximately 500,000 households benefiting from the renewable power generated by the wind farm, this project not only emphasizes the importance of renewable energy, but also highlights the efforts of GE Renewable Energy in executing large-scale offshore wind projects efficiently, safely, and with a focus on quality and reliability.